my name is uh, Dr. Akhil Chopra. I am a specialist in medical oncology. I currently practice, uh, I currently practice in Singapore for uh, a medical practice called OncoCare, which is uh, in Mount Elizabeth Hospital in Singapore. So just generally speaking, I think it's a great time to be an oncologist. Um, it's due to the rapid exponential um, uh, growth in cancer research, availability of, of new treatments that benefit our patients, uh, and largely due to uh, availability of next-gen sequencing of, of cancers that characterize cancers uh, based on the genetics, which has led this growth. We have always known that cancer is a genomic disease. It's a disease of genomic alterations. But due to certain limitations, technological limitations, um, we could never use that uh, to target cancers. Uh, but since the uh, initial human genome project was completed and ne next generation sequencing technologies were available, uh, the, there has been rapid progress uh, in terms of targeted therapies for various cancer types. So I think uh, last five years we have seen the molecular characterization of cancer something that, that we had never seen before. And treatment decisions based on individual uh, genomic profile of cancers, which is very unique. And, and one clear example is lung adenocarcinoma. Even when I was training to be an oncologist, which was not a long time ago, we only had chemotherapy to treat these cancers. And today it's, it's considered standard to check for at least four genomic alterations and treating patients based on the results of those alterations. So I think it's a very exciting time. And as the technology gets cheaper and more available uh, to oncologists all over the world, I think this is only, only going to improve in the next five years. So a lot has happened in the last five years. In fact, I think most oncologists like myself are struggling to keep up with the, the developments. Uh, again, uh, the, the major transformation has been uh, genomic characterization or molecular characterization of cancer and the availability of targeted therapies unique to the genomic alterations with the aim to improve the efficacy of the treatment and also reduce the toxicity of the treatment and essentially benefiting our patients to live longer and with good quality of life. Uh, this is particularly true in some cancers like lung cancer, melanoma, not all cancers, but I think we are getting there. And I think the next five years, that's going to be uh, the real uh, progress that we see. Unfortunately, even today, uh, despite all the technology, only a few mutations are targetable. But there are a lot of drugs in development, and, and that's what we're going to see in the next five years. More drugs getting approved for treatment of cancer. I think genomic profiling is an integral part of precision medicine. I don't think it's the only part, but an integral part. Um, as I said, there are certain genomic alterations um, against which uh, drugs have been designed. One example is the EGFR mutation in lung adenocarcinoma, uh, where we have specific drugs that target this mutation and, and lead to, to inhibition of the growth of the cancer and, of course, improvement in, in the symptoms as regards to the patient and prolonging their life. In fact, now we also know of resistance mechanisms to these drugs, and we have now second and third generation drugs that are available in the market. So it is really um, uh, gratifying for oncologists to be able to give these options to our patients that we didn't have before. Uh, but as I said, there's still a lot of work to be done. I think, uh, as I alluded to before, uh, not every mutation is targetable, uh, and not every uh, drug is accessible. Uh, there are a lot of drugs in clinical development, a lot of drugs that are only available through clinical trials, a lot of drugs that are still out of the, the reach for our patients because of cost issues. And we'll have to see in the next five years how this, this really uh, uh, comes to fruition. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, I have many cases, but um, I think especially in lung cancer, uh, and some rare cancers where uh, these tumors are, are relatively uh, infrequently seen in the clinic and a lot of treatment options because not a, not a lot of research has been done. 
it's easier to do research in a cancer that is very common, such as breast cancer, but harder to do research in uncommon cancers because there are just not enough patients. So, in those situations, genomic profiling can uh, sometimes um, uh, give clues in terms of unique mutations that are targetable. And I've had this experience um, uh, myself uh, over the past five to ten years. And those patients would have not had any other option for treatment otherwise. In addition, there's a new uh, exciting treatment oncology called immunotherapy, uh, which I'm sure you've heard about. It's unclear at this time uh, uh, to us as clinicians who are the right patients to, to treat with immunotherapy because it doesn't work for everyone and it's expensive. And ideally, as a doctor, I would like to know beforehand if my treatment is going to benefit the patient or not for, for a multitude of reasons. And uh, tumor genomic profiling can sometimes help answer that question. Recently, there has been uh, evidence and, and publications suggesting that the total mutational burden uh, of a cancer can help predict response to immunotherapy. And that's something that I have used uh, to help uh, guide my, my treatment decisions in patients. Yes, that's an excellent question. So, uh, one disadvantage of the, the, the rapid technological progress is probably that now doctors have too many options. There are a lot of commercial vendors who are available uh, and, and it becomes hard to choose. So, one clear, one clear um, uh, uh, mechanism to decide is cost, you know, uh, ex very expensive tests uh, are difficult to, to use routinely. But the most important uh, aspect that I use is, is validity. You want a platform which has been proven in terms of its analytical validity. So it, in layman's terms, the test should do what you're, it's supposed to do very well. Uh, one example is Foundation One. Foundation One I regard it as one of the pioneers when it comes to next-gen sequencing. It is one of the, one of the good examples of how an academic uh, uh, endeavor has led to a successful commercial endeavor. It is uh, impractical uh, to expect every hospital to have a molecular pathology lab. It's too expensive. So you need, uh, as, as doctors, we need a partner in the commercial vendor who's able to give us that high quality information with high analytic validity that we can use uh, in a routine uh, basis, a routine daily basis uh, in the clinic to help guide our decision making. In addition, it's probably not that difficult to generate the genomic data. Most of it is done by machines, it's automated. But how to interpret that data is very important because not everything uh, is clinically relevant. A lot of it is noise. And you need a, a vendor or a, or a team that is uh, experienced enough, competent enough to be able to um, uh, exclude the non-relevant information and, pres and present to the clinician clinically relevant genomic data in a concise manner, something that I can understand and act upon. And I think that's Foundation One is one example of, of a, um, uh, a commercially available platform which is very useful. Histopathology is actually not molecular pathology. Histopathology has been around for 100, probably 100 years and that's never going to be replaced and that, that is the part and possible of, of, of daily oncology uh, management. Molecular pathology is the next step which utilizes different tests, single gene tests, hotspot gene tests and next gen sequencing such as foundation one. Um, I don't think there are enough um, trained molecular pathologists because it's a relatively new field. Uh, most of them are still in academic centers, research-based centers. And that's why, again, as I said, we need um, successful, reliable uh, commercial organizations that can provide the same service to clinicians like myself. Um, so, the so sh short answer is there isn't, and there's a lot of um, uh, training that needs to be done for bioinformatics and molecular pathologists, because it's going to be a part of oncology. Well, I think it's an excellent partnership, and, and I say that because Roche is a, a, um, a, a very reputable, uh, big uh, pharmaceutical company 
uh, that has proven itself over many, many years. Uh, we use a lot of their drugs uh, daily in clinical practice. So I think they already understand the need of a clinician. Then partnering, partner, partnering with, with Foundation One uh, is really a win-win situation because they are using their expertise in the clinical uh, um, field of oncology with, with the, the scientific expertise of next-gen sequencing, molecular pathology, combining them together to give what the clinician wants. So I think that partnership is, is, is great, is successful and is likely to become more successful.